Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It has been a long, long time. I am so sorry, guys. I've just been really lazy these holidays and I've just like given up from filming. Um, but I've made a video now. I just felt like making one after that poll that I sent and you guys clearly wanted this video. So for all these year 10s who are probably watching this video and some weird year 11s, I guess, here are a few tips of what things I wish I knew when I actually went into year 11 because there are a few things that I didn't do that I wish I did and there are other things that I did and I'm really, really happy I did. So I'm gonna go through all of them right now. Yeah, so I have a list right here so let's just get to the first thing which is to get your revision resources made early getting your revision resources made early is one of the most useful things that you can do in preparation for your GCSEs because by the time you get to the exams you're not going to have any time to actually make any resources so whatever you have will do and you're going to be so so thankful of yourself in the past for making those revision resources one thing I did was for my case studies in geography I made an entire list of case studies uh, in one tiny booklet if you're doing geography please make a list of all your case studies in one tiny little booklet so you can just always refer back to it if you have biology and you're doing a test on evolution you need to make sure that you make your revision resources for that test and then you can use those revision resources for your GCSE exams I remember in English I used it a lot I had like all these booklets of quotations for different things and it was just so easy just to have all of them whenever I was revising okay so the fact that you're in year 11 means that you're gonna have some sort of year 11 mocks and these mocks are a big big thing you need to make sure that you take them seriously don't just think they're mocks it's fine make sure that you actually properly revise for them and treat them oh yikes what is happening to wait let me fix that the sun is right now in my eyes so I had to wear this so like it's a bit easier it's really important for you to revise for your year 11 mocks because you're going to probably get like some sort of results thing and it's gonna have all your grades on it and it will be a representation of what you could achieve in the GCSEs and if you don't do as well as you thought you would at least you know that the things that you did for those mock exams didn't work out so you need to try something different make an entire timetable when it's getting close I will talk about timetables later on in this video but it is so so important actually revising for these exams to like properly take them as GCSEs. You know what was weird though? I found these year 11 mocks even more stressful than my GCSE exam. I didn't feel as much under pressure as I was when I was revising for my year 11 mocks which is really weird because I was expecting the exact opposite to happen. So for any of you guys who are doing your GCSEs this year just remember that and uh, just don't worry because it's, it's gonna be fine. Okay so now you're in year 11 you need to make sure you start doing past papers. You don't need to do like 10 a day you just do like one a week at the start because you really don't need to push yourself but the one mistake I made when I was revising for my GCSEs uh, throughout year 11 I tried to save all the past papers near the end I I had all these revision resources so I found all these websites where I could get practice questions and I found all these past papers I was like if I do all of them now I'm not gonna have anything to do when GCSEs come about and I realized that once GCSEs were getting closer I had so many revision like questions and things that I couldn't do all of them uh, by the time GCSEs came about so a lot of them went to waste and uh, there were so many papers that I didn't actually get to do purely because of my time. I didn't have enough time. I really wish that I actually did those past papers beforehand. So it is really useful to, I would say, to stick to the subjects that you're really struggling with, to do past papers for them. You don't need to do maths past papers three times a day if you're really good at maths anyways. It doesn't really affect anything, but you're probably going to have a subject that you just really don't like. So just try to do past papers on that, especially on the content that you've done. Don't do a past paper on something you haven't learned. That just doesn't make any sense. But try and do as many past papers on whatever subject you're finding really difficult and you will see yourself getting better at it so for me the subject I just could not understand was English language I, I don't know why I just hate it and I can't do it as well as DT both those two exams I just I'm not good at so I really tried to properly push myself with those two exams I really well DT okay that's a different story but English language I literally uh, I remember once GCSE started coming about at the start I didn't do as much of this but once GCSEs came about when it was like uh, a few weeks until GCSEs I literally did essays upon essays upon essays and just continued sending them to my teacher and uh, by the end of it I didn't find it as scary as I originally thought it would be because um, sure the English language paper was a complete mess when I actually did it that's purely because of time but I think that if I hadn't done all those essays I would definitely not be at the stage I was in when I was doing that paper because I just felt like because of all that practice I actually knew what I was doing rather than just doing everything for the sake of doing it and just writing complete waffle so yeah I highly recommend you guys do past papers I had an entire video on like how you can organize your past papers so check that 
out. Uh, it's in the corner. I've already forgotten which direction the corner is, but um, check that out. Um, it's the past papers tally where you can uh, put all your uh, past papers. And basically what you can do is whenever you do a past paper, you can put it on that and then you can track your progress and see how well you're doing. Okay, so I did mention revision timetables quite a bit, but the one thing you really need to know is that in year 11, you don't need to make them from the very start. You don't need to go, okay, I'm going to be doing six hours a day, seven hours a day, eight hours. A day. You don't need to do any of that. Uh, I, I, I'm just trying to remember. So when I started year 11, I think, uh, I probably did like one hour each day at most. I, most days I didn't even do any extra revision on top of my homework and things but by the end of year 11 homework doesn't exist. It's all just past papers and revision and just trying to revise as much as you can so therefore you're gonna have more revision time near the end but at the start really don't, don't even worry about making revision timetables. It's just too much hassle. Just try and make sure that you understand all the content that's coming towards you because I feel like year 11 and year 10 they're very similar even though year 11 seems a bit more a bit more difficult uh, you do tackle a bit more difficult topics in year 11 that will be a bit more uh, challenging to understand but it's the same thing as year 10 you're still learning new content but by the end of year 11 you actually just do past papers and questions and you really need to take advantage of that time that was definitely one of the most useful times I'll talk a bit more about that later on in the video as well but yeah when exams do come about whether that your year 11 mocks or even smaller exams that you really need to revise for make sure you make a small timetable just for a few days just to plan out exactly when you're going to do the revision so you are more prepared that way because you know that if you just wake up one day and say I'm going to do this much revision today it's not going to happen you need to make sure you have some sort of plan for it especially when the actual GCSEs come about uh, I do have revision plans I've uh, uploaded on my YouTube channel as well if you want to check them out uh, but yeah it's all about not doing too much but splitting it over a long period of time but with smaller exams you can't really do that because you are only told like one week in notice so uh, for those ones you can just make a short revision timetable uh, just for that exam uh, uh, just so you can be a bit more organized when that exam does come about. Okay, speaking of exams, it's really important that whenever you do a paper or anything in class to keep that, uh, whether it's exams, worksheets, anything like that, whenever you do something in class, make sure you keep it so when you're actually revising for your GCSEs, you can see what you're weak at and specific areas that you need to really focus on. Uh, that's definitely one of the most useful things. If you haven't done that throughout year 10, make sure you start doing it in year 11. So when you're looking back over everything, you can see how your grades have progressed and see which subjects and topics you really need to work on and you can specifically see which one markers you keep on getting wrong or which four markers that you just keep on missing a mark on it's really really useful so I highly recommend that whenever you have a paper or something to keep that paper and to try and organize it somehow so I had folders where uh, for each folder I had like uh, different dividers where I'd have a separate subject and that way I could just keep track of all the worksheets past papers any quizzes or like anything just that we did in class uh, normally uh, what I would do is any worksheets I would keep and I'd try and practice them when GCSEs came about so um, but obviously I fell into the same thing of saying oh I have all this worksheets and everything I'll do it later when I actually need to revise rather than doing it now because that way uh, when GCSEs came about there were so many worksheets that I couldn't complete because I had past papers to do but there were so many past papers I couldn't complete because I had other practice questions to do so it just really became just overwhelming for me because uh, I had left everything uh, so last minute that uh, um, it just became too much. I gave myself way too many practice questions and I thought I was going to do all of them. It didn't really turn out that way so I think that it's really useful to get all these past papers and worksheets but make sure that you already attempt them earlier before your exams rather than keeping them all until one day because it's not going to work trust me that's definitely one of the things I wish I had done uh, if I were to restart year 11 again. Okay so right now if you're watching this uh, you'd probably be moving on from year 10 to year 11 and this would be like like the summer break obviously make sure you enjoy this break but uh, I remember that in my year 10 to 11 summer break I also made sure that I, I like targeted all the subjects that I was weakest on and I tried to improve on them and uh, I did that and I also tried to make sure that I had done all the revision materials for all the topics I had covered already when uh, GCSEs came about I already had all these revision materials rather than having to make them from scratch uh, so if you do have the free time make sure you go over the topics you've already completed 
created and see which ones you still don't understand and make sure you properly understand them and make flashcards or tiny booklets as I like doing them uh, or posters or mind maps or just whatever that works for you and make sure you keep them with you because by the time GCSEs come about, I've said this way too many times, you're going to thank yourself. You're really, really going to thank yourself. So make sure you help yourself in the future and do the stuff early because I mean, it's better to do it early than late and it's just going to save you a lot of stress and a lot of time. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed those tips and before you go, we have a sponsor for today's video and this is the new Yes Scientific Calculator E-Writer and this looks really cool. Let me actually open this and see what it's all about. Okay, so here is the calculator and from the cover, it's got a writing tablet on it. So this is actually insane. I've never seen a calculator with a writing tablet on it. So let me actually open this and just see how it is. So I'm not exactly sure if you're allowed this type of calculator for your GCSE exams, but uh, it's definitely a good one to have at home whenever you're revising or anything. Just look at that, look at how cool that looks. So right here is the stylus, which you can actually use to write whatever you want. So just look at that. You can actually do your working out right here uh, if you want, just like 2x plus 4 equals 8 or something and then just work it out. Uh, you can click this button to reset or the whiteboard over here and you can just continue writing on it forever, which is actually so cool. That's actually insane. Uh, but yeah, so you can use this calculator for your usual calculator use. So for example, if I'm just like writing in whatever. But yeah, guys, if you want one of these, make sure you click the link in the description down below and you can get one of them yourself. This is actually so cool. You don't even know. <laughs> I, I know never thought I'd be so happy about a calculator but I've never seen a calculator with a stylus and a writing pad over here that's that's actually insane and it's got a nice magnetic it's just, it's just so satisfying I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, if you're going into year 11 good luck good luck with your exams I'm gonna try and help you as much as I can uh, from my experience of the GCSEs and everything but I need to first see what my own results are they're coming out on the 25th of August and currently the day I'm filming this is the 5th of August so I still have 20 days that that took a lot of uh, brain power um but yeah so i i'm quite nervous about that but we'll see how it is i'm definitely going to upload a results day video so stay tuned for that i'm going to try and upload next week but i can't promise you guys so i'll, I'll try i'm gonna try uh if i can i will upload but knowing me i'm quite lazy uh these holidays i've just been doing whatever i've got a nice plant over here which you might have noticed which is kind of cool and i've got a cool fan so yeah i hope you guys enjoy your summer and i'll see you again next time bye